right? So having seen how we can access the pixels of an image, now we can finally go ahead and extract some information or do some tracking. And there's lots of cool ways that we can do this, and we're just going to cover a few. In this example, we'll look at a really simple way of doing this that just uses P5.js code, stuff that we've already covered so far, no fancy libraries, nothing like that. And to do this, we're going to do color tracking of this orange here. Um, and you'll see it's actually kind of amazing. We'll be able to track this orange all around the screen. Um, so I know I need, this is the same template as before, um, but I know one thing I definitely need is a color um, that I want to keep track of. And I don't know yet what this color is going to be because the lighting and everything is going to affect that. Um, so I'm creating it as a blank variable here. In my setup, I think I want to go ahead and just make this um, a color variable and let's just make it vaguely orange. This is probably not going to find it, but that's okay because we're going to use um, our mouse to select a color on the screen that will enable us to really carefully pick what we want. Okay, and so then I'm um, just displaying the video on the screen. And um, now I want some, or I need some way to look through the video and find the location of that color. Lots of ways that you could think about this. And there's lots of smarter ways than how we're gonna do this, but I think this is like pretty great because it doesn't use anything super complicated. Um, so what I wanna do, I think, is make a function here that will find the first pixel that's the color I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for something in this orange, it's gonna scan all the pixels on the screen until it finds that color. And then as soon as it does, it's gonna send back the result. So I'll call this find color. And um, what do we wanna send into this? I think I wanna put in the input. In this case, that'll be the frame of the video. And um, I want the color that I'm gonna look for. And in a minute, we'll improve this a little bit. Um, okay. And then we can call this in our draw. So we can say um, something like uh, let first px equals find color. And we're going to send in the video and the color to match like that. So it's going to give us the result. And then, um, yeah, we'll come back up there and we'll do a few other things. Okay. So I think the next thing we want to do is uh, say input dot load pixels. So for each frame, we're going to load the pixels. Um, we're going to go through all the pixels. So this will be two for loops. Um, and in the last example, we talked about why you might not want to go through all the pixels. Um, and that's a good idea if you're processing everything. In this case, we're just looking really quickly. And the minute we find the color we want, we're going to jump out of this function so that we can quit early. Um, X is less than input dot width. Uh, too many for loops. Okay. Um, so then we need to grab the color. And you know what? I'm just going to copy paste this here because you don't need to watch me type this thing out again. Um, so this is the same as before. Um, grab the index, grab the RGB values from that. Then we need to do kind of a mega if statement. We want to know if this color, the color we're looking for, matches this color. Now you could imagine if we did if r equals. Um, uh, oh, and we need to extract those colors too. I totally forgot to do this. So let's add that part here. Um, our color, remember, includes red, green, blue, and alpha. So I'm going to make a variable um, for each of those. It's just going to make my code a little bit cleaner and easier. So I'm extracting that over here. So I could say if r equals match r and green and blue, but the problem is that our video input is kind of messy. Like we, there's a lot of data going on here. There's light is changing, the sensor is auto-focusing. So if I'm looking for one exact RGB color, I'm actually not, it's not going to work very well. So instead, I think I want one more variable called um, tolerance. And the tolerance is going to be kind of like how much wiggle room do I have in matching that color? If the colors are within this range, it's good enough that's a match. Um, and this allows us also to kind of tune our system to be more um, admissive or to be more strict depending on the context. Um, so I'm going to use this also as a, an argument into my function like that. So instead, my if statement is going to be a little more complicated. I need to know if the red value is greater than the matching red value minus our tolerance or and, sorry, and 
if the red value is less than the matching red color minus that. Essentially, is it bracketed between those two values? Now, if this is breaking your brain, it's cool. Let's take a look at how we would do this in code. So we would need to say if r is greater than or equal to match r minus tolerance and the red is less than or equal to match r plus the tolerance. And, and then we need to do the same thing for green and the same thing for blue. I'm just going to copy this in here for you like that. So that's our full, it's a little crazy, but that's our full if statement. As a totally unrelated aside, this is actually the same formula we would use to determine if a point is inside of a rectangle. This is the same as collision detection for that, which is kind of a weird way to think about it, um, except in, instead of x and y, we've got three values, red, green, and blue. Okay, so if that matches, I want to immediately return the result, and I want to return this as a vector. Um, which is a variable that contains an x and a y value. Um, it just makes it a little easier. So I'm going to say return create vector at our x and y position. Now, the reason that we return here is that let's say I'm my orange is up here and we get all the way to the orange pixel down here and it matches. I don't need to check the rest of the image. So I can bail right here and return the result. So let's see, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I think that's good. Let's see if um, we can draw something in this spot. So um, I think I want to say um, fill color to match. So we're going to draw like a little um, circle here. Let's do a stroke around it too. Stroke weight of two, just so it's a little easier to see. And then we'll do a circle at first px.x dot y and 30, just something that'll allow us to see this. Oh, and then I think we should do one more thing before we test this, and that's we want some way to update the color we're going to look for. So we'll use mouse pressed for this, and I just need to call load pixels. So I have the screen's most up-to-date pixels, and then color to match will be equal to get mouse x and mouse y. Now, get is a little bit slow. In this case, it should be totally fine because we're just getting one pixel. Okay, so now when this runs, ah, we're getting an error. Um, I, hopefully you can see that. It says first px is undefined and it's on um, this line down here. Now, there's a couple of reasons that this can happen. Um, a variable before it's given a value in JavaScript is undefined, which means it just doesn't have any value at all. Um, and the reason could be several things. One, it might have never found our, um, our value that we were looking for. So it's just, you know, it's never seeing that color. Um, it could also be that our video hasn't loaded yet. Remember our sketch behind the scenes is loading the webcam. So um, I think what we wanna do here is we wanna try to find this color. And if first px does not equal undefined, then we will uh, display this stuff. So this is sort of a safety thing that makes sure, hey, if this wasn't there, just ignore. And there we go. And here's my orange, let's see. And if I click, now you can see it's tracking me around which is pretty cool. And it's really robust. Like, look how quickly it tracks it, even though I'm going kind of in and out of the light, that tolerance value makes it easier for it to track it. Um, now, I think there's one more safety feature, I guess, that we might want to add here. Um, and that's to see if in our function, perhaps the video hasn't loaded yet. We might have a problem. It looks like here it's working fine. Uh, I can see my circle is sort of down there. Um, so I just want to say if input.width is zero or input dot height is zero, which is going to mean the video exists but has no frames in it yet, then we're going to return undefined. And that's just again like maybe we don't need it, but it's sort of a safety feature. And here we go. So we've got no orange. If I click here, of course we can also track other colors. You're going to find it does not work as well for muted colors. So like the wall here um, there's just too many similar colors there, um, you know, tracking my skin may or may not work. And of course, the limitation here is um, that 
this is very dependent on light, um, but if you can have user input and fairly consistent lighting, color tracking is a super cool, powerful thing. You can have a custom object that's being tracked. Um, maybe you uh, make a sculpture or like a printed thing that it's being able to track or a puppet or something like that, um, or an object, which is really cool. Lots of things you could add to this too to make it work better, um, but color tracking is really rad because it's just P5.js, no fancy stuff at all. Um, but in the next examples, we'll add some really fancy stuff.